So gastrian ganglion, where it is situated? It is situated at the brachial scape. So this is the foramen oval. So this is the gastrian ganglia. This is pons. Hmm? So it is coming here. And through the foramen oval, the mandibular division is coming out. Then this is the maxillary division. So for this is foramen rotundum, through which the maxillary division comes out. And this is the superior orbital fissure, through which the ophthalmic division. So these are the three divisions. Ophthalmic comes to the superior orbital fissure. The maxillary or second divisions comes through the foramen rotundum. And the largest division, that is the mandibular division, it comes to the foramen oval. So you have to enter into the foramen oval from below. I am removing the nerves now. Okay. So, and let me put all the bone again. So, foramen oval is in the base of the skull. Hmm? So, you cannot see that foramen oval if you are having the true AP image. So, this is the true AP image. You cannot see the foramen oval. So, first step, what do you have to do? So, to see the base of the skull, you have to look the base of the skull from the caudal end. That means you make your CM orderly tilted so that you can see this mandible as an inverted V, inverted V like this. Hmm? And for that, you need to make the CM caudal tilt. How much caudal tilt? It depends on how much you are extending. Either you extend more, then you need less caudal tilt, or you extend less and you have to have the more caudal tilt. It can be somewhere between the 15 degree to 60 degree, this much. All depends on how much extension of the neck is done. And then still you cannot see the foramen of it. Hmm? Even this is also called submental view. So then what you have to do? You have to rotate the face towards the opposite side. Like if you are looking for the foramen oval on this side, either you rotate the head on the other side or you make a same side, ipsilateral tilt of the CM. So I'm rotating the face towards the other side. So now I can see the foramen oval here. So this is your foramen oval through which the mandibular division is coming up. So through that, you are, that is the axis. You cannot enter to the gastrian ganglion through the foramen rotundum or not through the superior orbital fissure. So your axis to reach there towards the gastrian ganglion is only novel. You need to make a caudal tilt and also you need to look it from the opposite side, little bit of, that means ipsilateral, either you turn the head to the other side or you make a ipsilateral rotation. How much ipsilateral rotation? Again, something around 15 degree to 30 degree ipsilateral rotation. And then you can search here. So this is your target where you have to put the needle. Once you are having this view, then you can make a tunnel vision to find out and to reach the foramen. Okay. So let me start with the demonstration on the procedure on the on the mannequin. What about the first step? The first step is to make it. So you have to you are looking at the base of the skull. So you need to look from the portal end. So I am looking at portal end. Till the lower border of the mandible is like an inverted peak. You see? Now it is looking like it, inverted V, but still I have to do more oblique to that. We can understand it is a, you know, the, so this is the inverted V, but this inverted V, we have to see it a more prominent inverted V. I'll talk about Okay. So now, at this, we can, I cannot see the foramen oval. So if you am searching my foramen oval here on this side, so what I have to do? Either I will be doing the same side ipsilateral oblique of the sear or opposite side rotation of the head, of the neck to find out the foramen oval. So here I am doing the same side ipsilateral oblique. And now you see the foramen oval is here. So this is the 
So there is no other foramen nearby. You have to just, you, you just, uh, you know, the largest foramen here, this is your foramen open. So whenever you are not able to find the foramen open, you always start from the beginning. You start from the AP, you make it a caudal tilt, till you see the inverted view of the mandible, which is called known as the sharp mental view. And then you make an ipsilateral oblique till you find the foramen open. Okay, so what do you do? I'll be putting a radiology radio of a marker here. Picture. No need to measure three centimeter from here and as any other, you know, towards the people, towards the track. A lot of things are written, but all things are for the all, all those things are for the uh, the bank procedure. Okay, so now I'm going in the tunnel vision. If you're going with the tunnel vision, so you need not measure anything, just identify the foreman of it. That's all. And go by tunnel vision. So this is now tunnel vision. And in this tunnel vision, go inside the foramen open. Sometimes this can happen that it can, we are hitting the margin of the uh, foramen open. Then you can also you can understand that your depth, or sometimes you can go directly into the foramen open. And now when you feel that you have gone deep, then you check the depth by the lateral. Okay, so foramen oval is where? So foramen oval is here, in this area. So I have to advance it more. And advancement should always be done in tunnel vision. You have to go again into the tunnel vision and you advance it. So I'm close to the foramen oval. Now I am inside. So here I have not touched the lateral lateral border, but again, if you are not sure, you check again and again. You go by the lateral view repeatedly, and you see because you cannot cross the foramen over too much. So I am into the foramen over, and here, what is very important boundary? What you have to under, understand that what is your you know which border you cannot cross. So the most important part what you need to remember. So this is the cella tarsica. This is the posterior clevis. So this slope of the bone. So basically, you can never cross this line. Why? Because here is your pons. If you are crossing this line, you will be hitting the pons. So you'll be landing up with dangerous complications. So always be sure that this is your foramen oval area and this is your the posterior extension of the clevis. So this white area, this area, your needle tip should be. It should not cross this area, this line. You just imagine this line from posterior clevis, this straight line. So this is the slope and you cannot cross this line. So I'll be able, I'll be fixed to the part. So I'll be, I can advance the needle a little more. Yeah. Okay, so I can advance the needle a little more. This much. So that is the final end point. Okay, so this line, this line I'm talking, just here is your pons. That is the final end point. So your needle tip should be somewhere in this area and then you should be going for the stimulation and then you should be doing the procedure. Okay, so that is the final end point of my needle position. This is your foramen oval in the oblique view. So if your target is B3, then this part is your target, means posterior lateral part. If your target is ophthalmic, then this part, superior medial part. And if your target is maxillary, then your target should be middle part. So this is in the oblique view. And in the lateral view, the, this needle tip is best for the maxillary. Little bit here will be for the mandibular and little bit here for the ophthalmic. So this margin is only one, two millimeter, but final needle position should be always by your stimulation. You need to stimulate it and understand whether your paresthesia is going along the ophthalmic division or maxillary division or mandibular division. Final tip, you have to advance depending on the stimulation parameter. But 
you can never advance up to this line. You have to stop just before the line. Okay. Can, if, if we are we, when I introduce my needle there and uh, inject some contrast, uh, don't inject is... contrast. Never yeah. inject contrast here. If you're injecting the contrast, what will happen? So then your needle tip will not be nicely visible. So contrast injection is done only when you are doing a balloon compression. Then you can inflate the balloon with a contrast and understand what you, where your balloon is. But for the radio frequency procedure, don't inject any contrast because otherwise you will not be able to uh, delineate your needle tip nicely. Even if I see in the needle some tricks of blood coming out? Even the blood is coming out, you need not bother. So you can reposition, but still if the blood is coming, don't you know manipulate the needle much here. Because as I told you, all the nearby important structures are there. Blood, if it is coming, it is not a contraindication. You still can go ahead with your procedure. But the problem with the blood is you cannot give the local anesthetic if it is come, blood is coming. In that situation, what do you have to do? You have to give a short anesthesia. Like, uh, you know, first you have to stimulate it. If the stimulation parameter is telling that your needle position is the perfect way, then you give a short anesthesia, short propofol, and then you can go ahead with your uh, the uh, the the uh, listening. Uh, but uh, don't manipulate the needle uh, much. One or a little bit of manipulation is allowed, but not much. Once you are getting the stimulation properly, don't manipulate the needle, reposition the needle much. Even if some CSF is coming, then also you need not abandon the case. You can just again slightly manipulate the needle, but don't manipulate the needle much again. If the CSF or blood is coming, still you can go ahead, provided your stimulation parameter is perfect. That means patient is feeling paresthesia either with the maxillary division or the mandibular division. And depending on your target, you can go ahead with that. Okay. So if I find uh, any blood or any CSF, I will not proceed in injection, just to the RF. Yes, you will not proceed for the local anesthetic injection. Then you have to go with a short anesthesia, little bit of propofol, and go ahead with the procedure. Provided you are having a good paresthesia in your desired area, then only you can go ahead. Okay, thanks. Sir, I have a question, please. Yes. Uh, sir, if there will be a twitching of muscle for the maxillary nerve block, that is a good remark, or we should withdraw a little a bit? Uh, no, the maxillary division don't have a motor contraction. So if you are doing a motor stimulation, and if the patient is having the contraction of the mandibular division, that means what? That means you are close to your mandibular division, and uh, what you have to do is that uh, this is called sensory motor stimulation. That means, suppose if you are getting the sensory stimulation at, uh, say, for example, at point three. A voltage then you double the current make it 0.6 voltage and see that the contraction of the motor contraction is not there this is called the double the current and see whether you are still getting the motor contraction so if they are getting the sensory motor dissociation then you can go ahead ideally then uh, the maxillary division should not have a contraction but still because the maxillary division and mandibular division are very close so sometimes even if the maxillary division is our target sometimes we cannot avoid the contraction of the mandibular division but ideally the best needle position should be you are not having any contraction by doubling the current where you got the paresthesia at maxillary division am i clear okay thank you sir The patient is in supine with a ring under the head and head is little bit extended with a small pillow below the shoulder. And this is the AP view. And then you are trying to make a submental view. You see, for the submental view, you know, becoming the inverted V. So we are trying to have a submental view and then making a same side oblique. And now the foramen ovule is coming up. So here is your foramen ovule. So this is the key point. You have to identify the foramen ovule very nicely. Then you clean that area, drape that area very nicely because you are do doing the procedures close to the brain. So meningitis is one of the important complications unless you are completely sterile. So you take the proper precaution of the sterility and then you uh, go ahead with the procedure. So here we are uh, uh, getting this foramen ovule 
we are trying to identify the foramen ovale there. So that is, we are identifying it and we are infiltrating the local anesthetic there in the skin and the uh, subcutaneous areas a little bit. And as I told you, we are not measuring anything from the angle of the mandible, angle of the mouth. And they're putting a mouth there inside wearing a, another gloves so that it, we are not needle is not puncturing the buccal mucosa. And then we are advancing the needle in tunnel vision. Always keep the neck a little bit of extended so that your job will be done better. So now we are in the, you see your needle is more towards your ophthalmic division, medial. So now we are repositioning the needle. So now uh, we are going towards the angle of the lateral angle. Lateral and the inferior part is your for the mandibular division. So we are doing that in here, the mandibular division. So that is the right position for it. So in the foramen oval, I hope everybody can appreciate the foramen oval here. That is the foramen oval. And when you are coming in the lateral view, you see this line I was talking about, this line, so extension of the posterior clevis line. So that line it should not cross. So this is the best position. My initially needle position was little more. So I withdraw it a little. This is the best position. And uh, now we are going to stimulate it. Sensory stimulation, the motor stimulation. Patient must be getting a very good paresthesia. And uh, if everything is, uh, you know, set, you are getting the good stimulation pattern, then you give the little bit of local anesthetic. Small amount of the local anesthetic, about 0.5 ml. And see that your cheek is anesthetized properly. So you touch your cheek and test whether the anesthesia of the cheek is proper. And then uh, you can go ahead with the listen. So normally we do the, so I'm checking the, the numbness. And uh, when a patient is telling that I am having the adequate numbness, then you're putting the electrode again. And uh, we are going ahead with the, uh, the listening. So listening is normally done with the three cycles, either at 65, 70, 75 degree, or you know sometimes we add another listen at 72 degree. And uh, each time you are doing one cycle of listening, you should be checking about the corneal reflex. If there is a corneal anesthesia, because you know keratitis, the corneal anesthesia and keratitis is one of the bad complications. So you should be checking that whether the corneal reflex is intact after the each listening, when you are going to increase the temperature further and uh, rotating the your the tip a little bit so that you can have a good amount of the lesion there. And uh, then another cycle in that way, three or four cycles. If you are doing it for the first time, go for the three cycle. If you are repeating the case after the recurrence, then you can go ahead with the fourth cycle. So you are checking the corneal anesthesia with a small piece of the, you know, the, the gauge piece. And uh, after completing of the lesion, so we are taking the, uh, uh, the probe and the catheter out. Okay, so.